Welcome to Keenan Stadium, where it's Carolina blue everywhere you look, in the sky and in the stands as well, as North Carolina hosts number 14 Miami. It's been a wild ride in the ACC all year long. Boston College and Clemson still fighting it out for the Atlantic title. Clemson already a lopsided win, and they control their own destiny. In the Coastal, unfortunately for Miami, the division has been decided. Georgia Tech blows out Duke. The Yellow Jackets lost head-to-head -to, -head to Miami, so they needed that win, and they get it, wrapping up a division title. Still plenty to play for for the Canes, though. They still have an outside shot at an at-large BCS bid. Hi again, everyone. I'm Bob Wachusen here with Brian Greasy. Thanks for spending part of your weekend with us. And Miami has been a different kind of team on the road so far this season. A very difficult road test today against the best defense in this conference. Well, it is a great defense. You know, I have to admit, as a former quarterback, I was trained not to like good defense. But I love this North Carolina defense. They are scary, and they are leading the ACC in every meaningful category only allowing 15 points a game, and they are led by their sophomore stud, Robert Quinn, the defensive end, who last week absolutely terrorized Thaddeus Lewis from Duke. He had three sacks, a forced fumble, and four and a half tackles for loss. He leads this defense fifth in the country. Overall, they'll have a good day today. What makes the matchup even more exciting is that it's the best defense in the ACC going up against the number one quarterback in the conference in passing efficiency in Ja'Cory Harris. Yeah, Ja'Cory Harris has really had a great season at times and then been inefficient at other times. 18 touchdowns on the year, but also 12 interceptions. And you see 25 times he's been sacked. He's held the ball a little bit long uh, for my taste, but he needs some help today against this great defense. And Greg Cooper, their, their uh, running back, has last week 152 yards, a career high for him. He has to get it going today and protect to Corey Harris. Not a cloud in the sky, but some thunder a moment ago. Provided by a squadron of F-18 Marine Hornets based in Beaufort, South Carolina, that just flew over Keenan Stadium. And what a perfect day we have for football. Hurricane Ida, or Tropical Storm Ida, the remnants of it, battered this area with nearly a half foot of rain over the past few days, but a perfect day for football and a reunion of sorts for Butch Davis and Randy Shannon. A coach and at one point player and one point pupil that spent some of the glory years at UM together. Butch Davis, of course, the head coach at Miami, taking over in 1995. He played with Butch and then served as his linebacker coach. 1995 through 1997, Butch Davis came back to Miami to really resurrect that program and take it, Brian, from a point where it was probably at its lowest in terms of its national image. Butch Davis did so much to rehabilitate how we think about Miami's program. Well, it certainly did, and after he left the following year, they win the national championship with Larry Coker, and a lot of those kids on that team were recruited by, by Butch Davis, and both of these coaches in their third years at their respective teams, and I really believe have these two programs headed in the right direction. Miami won the toss, deferred their choice to the second half. So it will be North Carolina starting with the football, and Matt Bosher will be kicking off. The Tar Heels now at two and three in the ACC Coastal, but they've won two in a row against Virginia Tech on the road and last week in their homecoming game against Duke. From the goal line, Cersei will bring it back. And he's tripped up at about the 23-yard line. So T.J. Yates in his career at North Carolina, second overall in yards, second overall in completions, third in touchdowns. Only one touchdown pass shy of Chris Keldor for second in the UNC Annals. But only nine touchdowns and ten interceptions this season, Brian, although a shuffling of so many different offensive line combinations to start the year and three true freshman wide receivers that have played a big role. Been a really challenging year for T.J. Yates with 13 players on this North Carolina offense injured during this season. It's hard to get a rhythm when guys aren't on the field. And he'll go play action on first down. Dump one to Pianalto and he gets popped after only a gain of a yard. Jared Campbell came up and laid out Pianalto. Ryan Houston, of course, is expected to be the workhorse today. He certainly was last week against Duke. Yeah, he certainly was. He had 37 carries a week ago. Sean Drawn had started most of the season, injured on the first play last week's game, and all of the weight fell to Ryan Houston. He handled it. And Houston doesn't get much on second down. It'll be third down and long. 
Stephen Wesley made the stop for Miami. Ryan Houston, as we said, with 37 carries last week, his previous for a career high had been 18 carries, and that was a few weeks ago when they wanted Virginia Tech on the road. So he had never carried the ball more than 18 times in a game before this season. And then only a few weeks later, he carries it 37 times, and John Shoup, the offensive coordinator, said, we'll have to load his wagon again today. It's on third down, high, way over the head of his intended receiver, Jeremy Boyd, and it's three downs and out for North Carolina. And this is going to be a key for North Carolina to convert third downs, possess the football, and keep protecting their defense. That's what's been a, such a success for them this year. Their defense is number one in all categories because, in a lot of ways, their offense has possessed the ball so much. We have to convert on third downs, and right there, Yates just missed it. Deron Collier back deep to receive. He had about as electrifying a punt return for a touchdown as he could have last week. And Miami's win over Virginia. And Shallot gets off a weak kick that rolls dead at about the 40-yard line. So that's great field position for the Canes. And Ja'Cory Harris, number one in the ACC and 14th in the nation in passing efficiency. A semifinalist for the Davey O'Brien Award for the nation's best quarterback. And also announced as a semifinalist for the Manning Award as well. 18 touchdowns, 12 interceptions, and as you saw, he could spread it around. He certainly did last week against Virginia. And that's the key to this offense, is spreading the football around, but they have not faced a defense, anything like what they're going to face today in this North Carolina defense. Ja'Cory Harris has to be efficient today. Toss sweep to Greg Cooper. Nothing there on first down. Let's take a look at Miami's impact players. You know, and against the great defense, you have to be able to establish the run. And it will be up to Greg Cooper today, the running back. He's averaging almost six yards a carry. It's critical for him to take pressure off to Corey Harris. Another guy that needs to keep pressure off of Harris is Jason Fox, the left tackle. He draws a tough assignment in Robert Quinn today. And defensively for the Hurricanes, Alan Bailey has had a fantastic season. Third in the ACC in both sacks and tackles for loss. Cooper on second down. Again, he is shut down at the line of scrimmage. May have lost a yard. Robert Quinn, the first man there, as he usually is for North Carolina. And this North Carolina defense is just too stingy up front. They're eighth in the nation uh, against the rush, and the front four for North Carolina is stout. Linebackers are smart. Right there, Robert Quinn, who's mostly a pass-rushing defensive end, but you see there he is stout against the run he's just a, a freak of nature size and speed athleticism and understands this game and how to play he tossed that tackle on top and quinn now has 16 and a half tackles for loss this season number one in the acc third and 12. Harris under pressure flips one up for grabs down the sideline has a man and unable to haul it in is laron bird We talked to Mark Ripple yesterday, the offensive coordinator from Miami. He said you have to stay out of third and long situations because this is what happens. You get a lot of rush. Ja'Cory Harris does a good job getting the ball down the field, and Bird had a chance to go up and get that ball. Got to go up and get it with two hands there. He may have been concerned about a safety coming over and giving him a pop in the mouth. I think Mark Whipple realizes that was a catchable ball for LaRon Bird, so both teams go three downs and out on their opening possessions. Washer also the punter. And it's Denara Searcy deep to receive. Lake locked down to one. They just barely get the snap off. Pretty good kick by Bosher. Searcy calls for a fair catch and fields at about his 15-yard line. No score. Defenses dominate the opening possessions after a 47-yard punt. Heels ball when we come back. Is there anything like a 65-degree fall day in the Carolinas? Here at Keenan Stadium in Chapel Hill, no score between number 14 Miami and UNC. The heels back to the offense at their own 20-yard line. They only have one first down offensively so far in the first quarter. Eights on a play-action roll. Up the sideline, there goes Ramsey. The fullback. 
near midfield before he's brought down. A gain of 28. And there was an accurate throw from T.J. Yates. Not a big window to fit that ball into the fullback. Coming out of the backfield, Jared Campbell, the safety right there, had an opportunity to knock that ball down, but a good throw and a good catch. Get some momentum going for this uh, UNC offense. as Curtis Porter throws Ryan Houston down. As we take a look at the Miami starting defense at the top of your screen, 4-3 group, but also a group that's hard to identify. We talked about earlier, Brian, because of how often they will now move around Allen Bailey specifically. Well, they will, but first and second down, they're going to line him up and, and let him play. But Curtis Porter is a true freshman, 6'1", 315 pounds, and Randy Shannon and John Lovett, the defensive coordinator, are really excited about his potential in this defense. Shovel pass. Into plus territory down to the 46-yard line of Miami. An 11-yard gain as Mywan Jackson, who's listed as a cornerback on the North Carolina roster, in with the offense and catches a shovel pass. Yeah, and you're going to see a lot of different looks uh, from this North Carolina offense. John Shoup, the offensive coordinator, has done a tremendous job this year with all the injuries on this offense to find ways to move the ball and to win football games. It's not easy when you have your best players on the sideline injured to move the ball, but he has found ways to run the football creatively and give his team a chance to, to compete. And North Carolina calls timeout. Presumably for the purposes of the play-by-play -play guy and the color commentator to look into the huddle and see if they've thrown any other surprising defensive players out there on offense. John Shoup didn't share that one with us yesterday. Keep your eyes out for the true freshman third string cornerback. We may throw a shovel pass to him. And here's John Shoup right here. He is... Uh... Uh, he has got this team, I think, in position to compete. You know, it was difficult early in the season with losing Hakeem Nix and Brooks Foster to the NFL. Brandon Tate was a second-round draft pick, another wide receiver. Three guys gone, and it is not easy to find ways to move the ball. They're going to run the ball inside with Ryan Houston, and then you're going to see block sweep reverses on the outside creative ways to get the ball down the field. And Shoup's got an amazing resume for a young man. A 30-year-old offensive coordinator at one point for the Bears under Dick Duran. One of his quarterbacks was well, Brian Greasy in Chicago. So here's your old offensive coordinator. It was like old home week sitting down with you and him uh, he, yesterday. He coached me when I was in Tampa with John Gruden. He was oh, okay. the quarterback <laughs> coach. And, um, he is just a, he's always prepared. That was the thing I remember about John. He was the most prepared coach I've ever had in my career. Third and short. Yates on a bootleg. Finds Pianato for a first down. And this is one of the things T.J. Yates does really well. And when you can't block up front really well, you can run, can move the pocket. Little play action, naked here. And a good throw back across your body to Pianalto. Pianalto is, is back now, and he's helped this offense. Last week he had five catches. All five were for first down. So T.J. Yates has missed his security blanket, his tight end, Zach Pianalto. Sorry, I'm here. Greg Little on a counter handoff, and there was nowhere to go. Well, there was nowhere to go because he ran right into his offensive tackle, Kyle Jolly. It's hard enough to uh, to get yards against this good Miami defense, but right here you'll see some of the creative runs that North Carolina employs, and right there he runs into his offensive tackle, number 72, Jolly, and I think he'll have a few words for him when he comes back to the uh, to the sidelines. Hey, man. I need some help. I need you to block, not tackle me. Well, that'll take us all the way down to the end of the first quarter. Houston cuts back inside the 30-yard line for a gain of two. And let's take a look at our Pacific Life game summary. Not even 100 total yards between the two teams offensively in the first quarter. Well, we expected a defensive battle coming into the game. Uh, and I really think it's going to come down to third downs and conversions and uh, Miami's been a little bit better than, than North Carolina early in this game. Those couple missed throws by T.J. Yates, but now he's got them going on this drive. He's three out of three on this drive for 53 yards, and they're knocking on the door. 
Big play here, though, on third down and eight to keep the drive alive. The slant is there to Little. Breaks a tackle. There goes Greg Little. Touchdown, Tar Heels. He came with a cover zero blitz, all out blitz, and a good job by Yates reading it and feeding the ball to the beast right there, Greg Little. His best receiver and broke one tackle and it was off, off, off the races. To Corey Harris on a play action rollout. Has Bird wide open. Can he stay in bounds? He does. Added on about 10 yards to the end of the catch to the 48-yard line of North Carolina. Charles Brown upended him, but it's a gain of 24 to LaRon Bird. And I, how does a receiver get that wide open? He must have fallen down. Charlie Brown at the top was covering Bird. I think he fell down, but that was just too easy right there. Not typical of this uh, North Carolina defense. You see Mark Whipple as well trying to move the pocket and avoid an intense rush. 42 defense, that's 15 yards from the end of the run, first down. That's Robert Quinn called for a personal foul, the flag thrown late, just as the play was ending on the far side of the field. That's the first flag thrown today against either team, and it turns into a 39-yard play all in. And here's Quinn right here with Orlando Franklin, and just back and forth, and the, the second uh, offender always gets caught. You know, Franklin could have been called there too, but. Quinn reacted, and he's the one that gets called. It's not typical for Robert Quinn, who's a mild-mannered individual, a quiet guy, a leader on this defense, understands the importance of discipline and a team guy. Sometimes you're in the heat of the battle, you just can't help but react. Harris finds Hankerson. Gain of about three. Screen. They've got it set up to Berry. Damian Berry inside the 10 yard line. Close to the pylon. Reaches for the goal line. Out of bounds at the two. What a run on the screen by Damian Berry. Wow, tremendous effort by Damian Berry. And I'm not so sure he didn't stay in bounds there, but great job by Berry. On the, and when you go against a good defense, and they're rushing the passer. Screens can neutralize that pass rush. And right there, Sturdivant, 52, misses a tackle. But a great effort at the end. And it's very close whether he went out. Well, they marked him out at the two-yard line. They have not buzzed down as of yet to say they want to review the play. And it looks like Harris will run the play to Barry again. Well, they're now going to blow it dead and say maybe that they buzzed down from the replay booth before the play even began. No. They're going to say Miami called a timeout. Miami, second timeout of the half. Uh, Miami called a timeout from the sideline, and it looked as if with both teams, I think, not paying attention to the whistle and running that play full speed, that had they not called a timeout, Barry might have scored a touchdown. The Dean Dome has already been rocking a couple of times this season. College basketball is underway as we come down the stretch run in college football. Miami trailing North Carolina 7 to nothing. First and goal for the Canes at the two after the timeout. Barry into the pile at the goal line. No signal as of yet, and he stopped just short. Damian Barry has been the touchdown maker, six on the season. 
He tried to go right at this uh, Carolina defense, and he didn't get in right there. Damian Berry has scored at least one touchdown in five straight games. He leads Miami, but Robert Quinn and that North Carolina defensive front, number one against the run in the ACC, second and goal. Again, it's Berry. This time he fights across the chalk. Touchdown! The Canes answer the Carolina score. We go back to the, uh, the completed pass and the personal foul penalty being huge in this drive. So it turns out to be a five-play, 72-yard touchdown drive for Miami. Not only did you get the personal foul that made a 24-yard play, a 39-yard play, but that screen to Damian Barry, the other big gainer for the Canes. And Matt Bosher ties it. Houston moved the chains. Carolina going a little bit of a, of a hurry up offense. I like to change the momentum of the game. You know, they had a good drive last time out, score a touchdown. Miami answers the touchdown of their own. And now John Shoup decides to go with a little bit of a hurry up offense after a good kick return, good field position on the Miami 35. Four man rush and Yates drops the ball. Regains his composure and actually maybe picks up a yard on the underneath completion. That was a pretty good job by T.J. Yates to find the loose ball and hit Todd Harrelson. Yeah, he just dropped the snap. May have been a little low, and then he does his uh, little Tony Romo impersonation right there. Keep the play alive. And... You're going to see a lot from this, from this North Carolina offense. You're going to see Ryan Houston up the middle, then you're going to come back with another formation, empty formation. Then you're going to see a sweep, and you're going to see another inside run zone. Here you come out in one back. John Shoup trying to keep him off balance a little bit. Gates, a little throwback screen, flips it, and finds Johnny White. What an inventive play call, and there goes White. First and goal, North Carolina at the nine. Randy Phillips may have saved the touchdown. Well, we mentioned keep him off balance. Here's White right here. He's going to go take the fake, act like he doesn't have the ball, and then you've got two guys out in front of him to go down the field. A good misdirection to keep Miami defensively off balance. You can run the football, and you can use the naked game as a complement. You've got good things going offensively. Little in motion. Play action fake towards the end zone for Pianalto. Off his fingertips. Pianalto had a step on Vaughn Telemac. Well, nice play action, as we mentioned. And TJ Yates had Pianalto. It was a beautiful throw in the corner of the end zone. That's what the run game will do for you. If you're able to run it, Play action work and right there just out of the reach of Pianalto. Are you surprised that the game plan has been this wide open for North Carolina? I don't think so. I, I think they understand they're going to need to score some points today because Ja'Cory Harris and this Miami offense are explosive. Again, that's little in motion. This is Ryan Houston up the middle. Down to the five-yard line where it will be third down and goal. Oh, Ryan Houston, did he carry the mail last week against the Blue Devils? <laughs> well, we were talking with John Shoup, and he compared him to Lendell White. You know, big guy coming through, and he's difficult to tackle, 250 pounds. We asked him if he was uh, had the conditioning to go 37 more carries this week. He said, you know, I was sore from last week, but I got in the weight room and worked it out. I'm ready to go again today, so... He'll get a, at least 30 carries today. Shotgun on third and goal for Yates. Tipped ball incomplete. Again looking for Pianalto. And that one went through his hands. It'll be fourth and goal, and here comes the field goal group. 
It's tough to throw the football down here inside the five yard line. The windows are tight and right there, the tight coverage on Pianalto and the ball was just a little bit high. The first play on first down, the throw to Pianalto was, was the one they had to convert if they were gonna score down here on this drive. It was just out of his reach. Casey Barth carrying on the family tradition of kicking here at North Carolina. He's made nine in a row. This one from only 22 yards away. That's 10 in a row for Barth. And the heels are back on top by three. Here in North Carolina, second down and 10 after the interception. And now flags fly at the snap. This will be a false start. False start, 70, offense, five-yard penalty. It's still second down. Let's go back and take a look at the interception. Right here is Hankerson. He's going to go down the field on a post, and Harris has him open, but he needs to throw the ball across the field. But he throws it behind him and high and turns out to be an interception. That's a huge swing from a potential touchdown to Hankerson across the field, turns into an interception and a run back to midfield. And Yates on second and 15, under some pressure, avoids the sack. He wants a bomb down the sideline, and his receiver out of bounds. Allen Bailey got pressure on uh, T.J. Yates and almost ripped the ball out. Jay Boyd was about five yards out of bounds when Yates threw the pass. Turning into a little bit of bombs away here. and Not the style of this North Carolina offense, but... They've had some big chunk plays today. Looking back at the interception, though, is that too often the style of the Miami offense? Well, they threw too many tee balls. Yeah, you're, I mean, if you're going to throw the ball down the field, it's it's not as accurate. You're not as accurate, but I really believe if Ja'Cory Harris would have thrown that ball across the field to where Hankerson was going and not where he was, he would have had a completion. Third and 15, a screen. Ryan Houston, blockers out in front, has the first down. Good execution here on the screen pass. Yates keeps his eyes down the field, drops it off to Houston, and to get your blockers out in front of you with a 245-pound back coming downhill, uh, that is a, that's a scary thought right there. <laughs> but get him, they want to get him the ball in as many ways as they can. They want to take the load off of him just taking it out of the eye. Get him the ball in the perimeter and some screen game. Houston right up the gut. Two yard game. As we come up under six minutes to go here in the first half. Daryl Sharpton made the tackle. Miami will start to, to use their safeties to come down and stop Ryan Houston in the running game. Talking to John Lovett yesterday, he will employ both safeties, Telemac and Phillips down at eight man in the box if North Carolina starts to have success on the ground. Underneath. Little fights for more yardage. Well, he very easily could have gone out of bounds at the 25-yard line, and he backed his way to three more yards, sets up third down and two. Little is a physical specimen, as you mentioned, Bob. He was a running back by trade, and then they switched him to wide receiver, 6'3", 215 pounds, and... Right there, you're right. It's all about attitude and effort. And he carried Randy Phillips for another three yards. I got in the elevator with him when we were having our interviews yesterday, and I thought he was a linebacker when he got in the elevator. John Shoup compared him to Sterling Sharp, that kind of a flanker. Just a carry tacklers type player. Third and two, Houston shut down. Loss of a couple of yards. Daryl Sharpton and a run blitzing Telemac. They're on the stop, so now what do you do? You're inside the 25-yard line. Now it's fourth down and at least three, maybe four. Well, I think they have a lot of confidence in their kicker, Casey Barth. He's been uh, good this year. It's only going to be a 42-yard kick and put them up by six. This is kind of a an easy call, I think, for North Carolina. Well, he's made 10 in a row, but his long this season only 41. So this would tie his season long. It's closer to 42. It's got the leg. It is good. So Barth, at the very least, equals, if not exceeds his season long of 42 yards. So now it's fourth and 10. And Bosher on a fake punt. Has blockers.
Bashir's out in front. A huge play as Bashir takes it down the sideline, all the way down to the 44-yard line of North Carolina. A fake punt on fourth and ten from inside your own 30-yard line. That is a gutsy call by Randy Shannon. A tremendous call, and if you're going to beat North Carolina in this defense, you got to have some plays like this and give credit to Randy Shannon to call it, even though they have the penalty that backs them up an extra five yards. I wonder if they had it called on fourth and five and left it for fourth and ten. Either way, a tremendous play, and Matt Bosher, a good job of getting downfield. Momentum swings in this ball game against a good defense. This defense thinks they get off the field. Now you bring it back on. Advantage to the offense. Play action for Harris. Whips one to the sideline. Coming back to make the catch for a first down is LaRon Bird. How about Matt Bosher, the kicker? He's now the leading rusher for the Canes after that last carry. So Miami now is going to come in a no huddle. They sense the momentum swing and Mark Whipple in this offense right up on the ball again. Over the middle, tipped ball, dangerous pass. Intended for Travis Benjamin, but Kendrick Burney jumped up and knocked it away. And a dangerous pass. This is the staple play in the West Coast offense. You're going to see a slant right here from Benjamin on the inside. And Harris does not see the linebacker, Kevin Reddick, right there in the middle. You have to be able to see defensive players in the middle of the field. If you're going to throw the slant in the middle of the field, you have got to be able to see those guys and move them pre-snap with your eyes to open that lane to throw the, the slant. Cooper on a trap handoff. Shut down again at the line for no gain again. It's Sturdivant. Vaughn Sturdivant, according to Everett Withers, the defensive coordinator, he's just one of those guys that gets it. He said, no, this is a guy in the front seven. When I want to have a football conversation, those conversations coaches love to have with players, I seek out Sturdivant. Uh, and he is the spokesman of this defense. If Everett Withers has anything that he wants to relay to his team, it's through Quan Sturdivant. And he said, you know, late in the season, the guys don't listen to the coach. They're going to listen to the leaders on defense, and that's Quan Sturdivant. the blitz on third down. Harris under pressure. Hit as he throws. Intercepted again. Again it's Bernie with a convoy out in front. Down the sideline Kendrick Bernie. Touchdown. They're going to check and see if Bernie may have stepped out of bounds. He was very close to stepping out of bounds. Probably somewhere in the neighborhood of the Miami 40, maybe 35-yard line right in front of the North Carolina bench. And credit credit the UNC defense up front and specifically Bruce Carter for getting the pressure on Ja'Cory Harris and making that an errant throw. And a great job by Bernie right there with the move on Ja'Cory Harris to keep in, in looks like he stayed in bounds well again it has to be conclusive video evidence indisputable video evidence that he stepped out of bounds once they ruled him in bounds the entire way and certainly it looks at no point on any of the replays that we've shown that you can see him step out yeah he walked the tightrope right there like a punt returner <laughs> Stayed inbounds. The call is confirmed. Touchdown. So a 77-yard touchdown return by Kendrick Bernie. His second interception here in the first half. That one he brings the distance. And with under a minute to go to Corey Harris. And this Miami offense has dug themselves a hole. And with the, re the resiliency of this defense to give up the fake punt on special teams and then to come back and hold Miami and then to score the touchdown right before half, huge momentum shift. 
The line drive kick takes a nice hop for Greg Cooper. And he's tripped up at the 27-yard line. A screen. Cooper cuts it back. Greg Cooper with blockers out in front. Gets hammered down at midfield, but a nice job by Travis Benjamin downfield to help block for him. A gain of 25. Eventually, Tydreek Powell came downfield to make the tackle, and quickly, Miami back up to the line. Under 40 seconds to go. They have a timeout. Harris back to throw. Slants one underneath, thrown behind LaRon Bird, but he makes a nice adjustment. Makes the catch. Short of the first down, so the clock continues to roll. They used our timeout right there, but they didn't. It's taken a long time to get this playoff. Under 20 seconds to go. Second and short. And that catch is made for a first down, so that will stop the clock with 14 seconds remaining as Hankerson gets to the 37-yard line. So you've got time for maybe three snaps with your timeout with 14 seconds to go. Well, you have to call it now. They start the clock after the timeout or after the first down stops the clock. Now we're down to five seconds. This will probably be the last play. Ja'Cory Harris goes down, and that'll end the half. That's just terrible clock management by the Canes to finish the first half with a timeout that you failed to use. After that last completed pass, they should have been up on the line of scrimmage, ready to snap it and spike it on first down, then be able to run two plays and use your timeout. Right there, they just gave up an opportunity for three points. They were probably one good completion away from at least reasonable field goal range, and yet they end the first half down by two scores with a timeout in their pocket. 20 to 7, North Carolina has the lead. You're watching ESPN's College Football on ABC. For the start of the third quarter here at Keenan Stadium in Chapel Hill, a two score lead for North Carolina over number 14, Miami. Bob Schusen and Brian Greasy. We've seen Miami before this season, and we've seen them in this position before. Some self inflicted wounds. A couple of weeks ago at Wake Forest, though, on the road in a tough environment, they had a great second half comeback. Can they do it again? Well, they can. I mean, the first half, three interceptions by Ja'Cory Harris, but we've learned from him that he has the presence to come back, and he'll compete in the second half. Obviously, for Miami, to try and get the second half together, we take a look at our city inside view. They have to figure out this defensive front for North Carolina. Well, they do. They have a lot of different looks we talked about, especially on third down, and that, that last interception, you can see the left side of the Miami offensive line go to the left, three guys for two, and then leave three guys on the top, and Bruce Carter on the top will come free and get his hand on Ja'Cory Harris's arm right there and force an errant throw. The ball goes straight up in the air, and Kendrick Burney comes down with it. We talked about this defense, 1 of 11, and Kendrick Burney is the recipient of the good fortune of that pressure up front by this defensive front. And Miami, who won the toss before the game and deferred their option to the second half, start the second half with the football. A short kick. Mike James from about the 15-yard line. Gets out to the 30-yard line as we take a look at our Pacific Life game summary. Some of the big numbers from the first half. And turnovers, it's always the number one statistic in any football game. Look at points off turnovers. 10-0 for North Carolina in the first half. Yeah, it is, and this has been the Achilles heel of the Miami uh, offense, and specifically of Ja'Cory Harris. Not fantastic at times, throwing the ball down the field with a lot of explosive plays, but with that comes the risk of turnovers, and tonight every single one of his three turnovers have been down the field. for Harris, first play of the second half. Into traffic, incomplete. Threw it behind Tavares Johnson. Two weeks ago against Wake Forest, they were down by two touchdowns in the first half, and Ja'Cory Harris and this Miami offense came out in the second half and were able to put together some drives and claw their way back into the game and ended up winning 28-27 on the road at Wake Forest. And very similar situation here tonight the three interceptions we know that Ja'Cory Harris will not hesitate to continue to throw the ball down the field and take those chances because that's how this offense works Cooper hard working five yards again right behind the center A.J. Trump 
A reminder that coming up after our first break here in the third quarter, we'll be joined by the head basketball coach of the defending national champions, Roy Williams of the Tar Heels, will be with us. That comes up in just a moment. Big third down and five, though. First half, Miami was only one of four to Corey Harris in completions on third down. He needs to be better in the second half. Over the middle. Again, he throws it behind his receiver. Leonard Hankerson was wide open. And Ja'Cory Harris hit him on his back shoulder. Yeah, and Hankerson, if he gets that ball in front of Hankerson, he may still be running. Good design play of crossing route against man coverage. And Ja'Cory Harris just kind of short-armed it right there. Put it on the back pad of, of Hankerson. He's lucky it's not another interception. But you see on the sideline, the coach is in disbelief. That ball has got to be a foot in front of Leonard Hankerson's number. Allow him to catch it and run, and they have a, a big play. Miami resets their punt unit with the play clock at 7. Hendrick Burney calls for a fair catch. And on the back pedal fields, at his own 14-yard line. You know, that last pass that missed for Hankerson, Brian, it's one of those plays that a couple hours from now when we're wrapping up the second half, fans watching at home, even we might forget that play. Yeah. But for a coach, that's one of those plays you realize it's a very subtle, small missed opportunity that could turn the entire game around. Well, it's a huge play. I mean, you work all week on that specific play to get the right coverage. You're in this personnel, you're in the formation to entice the defense to play man-to-man -man coverage. Everything works perfectly. The guy comes open, you have a big play and a conversion on third down, and then the quarterback just throws it a foot behind the receiver and everything is for naught. Wide receiver screen to the near side and a good gain out of the 22-yard line to Eric Highsmith, his first catch. As the true <laughs> freshman finally gets his hands on the football. Three true freshman uh, wide receivers play in this North Carolina offense. Boyd, as you see, and Eric Highsmith right there with the catch. And Josh Adams uh, started the first two games of the season. He is now uh, injured and won't play tonight. But three true freshmen wide receivers for the Tar Heels. Tough way to break them in against the Kings. Houston up the middle. First down and more. Out close to the 30-yard line. The North Carolina is in a good position now. All the, the uh, energy and effort that went in the first half, now they're up by two touchdowns. They can run their offense. If they would have been down to two scores, force them to throw the football, a distinct disadvantage for, for them, but they can run their offense. John Shoup can call anything he wants now, run or pass. Nice play action fake. Pianalto underneath has the catch close to midfield. And the running game sets this up. We're going to see hard play action to the strong side and watch the linebacker number 50 bites on the run and Pianalto gets right behind him and a good accurate throw by TJ Yates. When this offense is working, the run sets up the pass and John Shoup does a great job of marrying the play action pass with runs that are working in that game specifically and right there he got sharp in the bite. There goes Little in motion again. Houston. Into the secondary. Another first down for North Carolina. That time Pianalto, the tight end, helped Jonathan Cooper, the left guard, pave the way. Yeah, good good blocks up front. Jolly blocks down 17. Pianalto comes out and blocks Sharpton 50 and opens a huge hole. And Zach Houston, when he gets his pads down in the secondary, he can inflict some pain. Ryan Houston comes to the sideline, and Johnny White now in the game at the top of your screen. They go empty. Out of the shotgun, the quick hitter, low. Pianalto hauls it in. Five-yard gain on first down. With Houston carrying the ball 37 times last week against Duke, I'm not sure we expected this to be the game plan, but a lot of different motions across the ball, going empty and... This is all about confidence, and for John Shoup, this is the way he wants to operate. 
but it has to stem from the quarterback, T.J. Yates. He pulls the trigger. He has to be able to convert third downs, keep him in positive situations. As long as he can handle that, John Shoup will continue to call this wide-open offense. Houston makes a man miss at the line. Has another first down. The Ryan Houston has 16 career touchdown runs. Never has had a touchdown run of longer than seven yards. <laughs> so that's the kind of running back he is, right? Well, he certainly is. He's downhill. He's got big legs, 245 pounds. They pull the left guard, and Pianalto again, the same play they had before in this drive. And Houston just keeps churning, gets a first down. And you feel the momentum of this uh, North Carolina offense, which has really been the redheaded stepchild of this North Carolina team. Everybody talks about the defense. What a good year they're having. This offense is having a coming out party tonight against the Hurricanes. A 13-point lead for North Carolina, and that student section enjoys those kind of leads for basketball as well. And the head coach of the defending national champions, Roy Williams, joins us now in the booth. Coach, off to a good start already, although I saw you the other night against NC Central. Second half, few turnovers, all five of those starters get off the floor, <laughs> put the new guys in. Right? Are you sending a message to maybe even some of your young star players this year early? Well, I think so. The biggest message for those guys who were out there messing it up to start with, but uh, <laughs> we had five turnovers in the first minute and 52 seconds. But uh, I do believe that uh, what we're supposed to focus on, you're supposed to do, and if you don't do it, then we got somebody else over there that wants to play. Now your football team, uh, uh, Butch Davis's football team, has been pretty focused tonight. This offense and defense, what a combination we've seen. You know, we've been great defensively all year, and in the uh, last couple of games we started running the ball a little bit better and a little bit better, and uh, uh, I thought we were going to win, so they got to keep going because that's what I've been telling all our players and coaches we're going to win this thing too. But uh, uh, Butch does a great job, and we've got great kids, and maybe – as much speed as I've ever seen on the defensive wow. side of the football in the college game. What do you think of Robert Quinn? Any space on your team for him? You know, Julius Peppers did yeah, That's him. right. Robert's not quite as big as Julius <laughs> was, but uh, Robert's awfully quick between he and, and Bruce Carter, those guys at linebacker for us. I've, I've never seen that kind of speed. I'm just dumb enough. I helped coach high school football for four years, so uh, I know just enough to get myself in trouble. <laughs> nice throw from T.J. Yates to Highsmith on third down and 11 to pick up the first down and move the chains for Carolina. Yeah, great play. He's going to come down and be in the middle of the field and pull out the linebackers and a good accurate throw mm -hmm. by T.J. Yates for a critical first down conversion in the red zone. You know, Coach, last week we were in Ames, Iowa. And apparently you spent some quality time in Ames, Iowa, too. Yeah, the Tell last, the folks about that recruit. The last 15 months I've been there quite a bit. You know, I coached <laughs> at Kansas and played there for 15 years. I didn't think I'd go back this many times, but it, uh, it was well worth it. Harrison Barnes signed with us last night and truly one of the great uh, young men that I've ever been around. I know that all of the, you know, prognosticators might say number one recruit in America and Harrison Barnes is number one in our ESPNU top 100. It's all speculation. Yes. But what did you like so much about Harrison Barnes that convinced you to target him? Well, he has the whole package. I mean, he's a great student. Uh, everyone loves him. He has tremendous ability. He has great discipline, great focus to work. I mean, there's nothing bad about the young man, I can tell you that. It's like a fast break offense from the uh, North Carolina what, uh, offense here. Huh? Right. All of a sudden, we're going up and down that field. This is this is a lot of fun watching this. Houston in motion out of the backfield. The slant oh. underneath doesn't work for Greg Little. You know, Greg Little played basketball for us a couple years ago, so I'm a little uh, extra into service. I'm what's number eight do something. Yeah, he had a big play in the in the first half on mm -hmm. a on an all out blitz. Caught the ball and was able to break one tackle there again. Miami came with an all out blitz to pressure T.J. Yates, and he had. The same play, Little on an inside slant route, and Miami just got to Yates and deflected the pass. Finger on it. Third down and eight. Now this is big force right here. We'd like to get another touchdown here to say the least. At the 15-yard line, shotgun for Yates. Wide open, a high throw, mm. and Houston yeah. couldn't haul it in. It'll be fourth down, so the yeah. field goal unit will come out. What does it do? for a basketball program that obviously is known as the hallmark of this university 
if Butch Davis is able to continue to elevate the football program. You see all the excitement in the stands. That just translates to basketball season as well. If they win, it helps us. I like to think if we win, it helps them. The more you win, the more you win is the way I look at it. If you birdie the first hole, you got a chance to birdie them all. And uh, so for us, what they do over here is extremely important. And the great pageantry of college football at this place is fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Casey Barth continues that field goal streak. Well, good luck this season in what is always going to be a very difficult ACC coach. Thanks for the time. We appreciate well, it. Well, thank you very much. This is exciting watching our football team going up and down the field. Thanks to you guys. A great gift. Right, thank you for joining us. We appreciate it. That's Roy thank Williams joining us here at North Carolina. His Tar Heels and Butch Davis's Tar Heels up 23 to 7. Corey Harris over the middle, a little high. It's pulled down by Mike James. He's got a first down. And the folks at St. Peter's have actually announced that they're going to open up their athletic bubble for an all-nighter. So the kids are going to come in. They're going to play Guitar Hero and serve a big tailgate. And at 4 o'clock in the morning when they open the doors, they'll be there in their PJs. <laughs> they could be bleary-eyed when the tip-off. Uh, I'll, I'll be at home with my, my tea and my breakfast. I'll watch it. Oh, I'm sure you'll be locked in. <laughs> It's 6 a.m. Eastern, 4 Mountain, I believe, back in Denver. Oh, it'll be an early morning. So maybe I won't be watching. <laughs> First down for the games. Only a three-man rush. Harris buys some additional time. Floats one down the sideline, incomplete. Intended for Aldarius Johnson. He's been quiet today. He was the leading receiver for Miami last season and caught a big touchdown pass in that comeback over Wake Forest. Well, now Miami is down 16 points, two scores, as you mentioned, and uh, tough sledding now in the second half, the end of this game against the number one defense in the ACC, and they know that Miami has to throw the football to get back in this football game, so expect here on second and long and third downs, a lot of pressure up front from Austin and Quinn on the outside. Trap hand off to Cooper on second and long. He's got room. Very close to a first down. Pulled down from behind by Melvin Williams and Kevin Reddick. Reddick, a true freshman Mike linebacker. A good job up front blocking the scheme here. Sturdivant gets a block. Melvin Williams, number 10 for Carolina, comes up and lays the wood on Greg Cooper to keep him from getting that first down. But a good second and 10 play call there with a draw. Gains nine. You're in a manageable situation now, third and one. Now Damian Berry in as the lone setback on third down and a foot. Now they shift to the eye with Mike James at fullback. And they run it with Berry right behind James. He's got the first down and breaks a tackle. An explosive run by Damian Berry on third down and a foot. Picks up 20. Damian Barry has the ability to break these runs right here. You see the corner is going to come on a blitz, and once Barry breaks the line of scrimmage, there's only the corner, the safety left, to tackle him, and he misses that tackle right there. And they brought the corner off the edge to try to stop the run, and it backfired on him. Barry makes a play. Harris to the sideline. He's got Benjamin. Inside the 25-yard line. And that's good for another Miami first down, a gain of 14. What a huge drive you can feel, Brian, that this is for Miami. A critical drive for Miami. And, you know, as bad as they played in the first half, turning the football over to only be down by two scores uh, and driving right now, no panic on that sideline from Randy Shannon or Mark Whipple or certainly from Ja'Cory Harris, who is a cool cucumber in the pocket and will continue to throw the football down the field and, if he can continue to run the football with his backs, they can keep that balance on offense. Cooper on a stretch play left. Well, he did really well just to pick up a couple of yards. Second and eight. Here comes the blitz. Miami picks it up in a double coverage. And Jimmy Graham did well to tip that ball away. It could have been a fourth interception for DeCorey Harris. Well, they got man-to-man -man coverage. It's what they wanted. The tight end's going to come across the field, but Ja'Cory Harris needs to lead him across the field on a dart, not way up in the air, give Melvin Williams an opportunity to go break up that pass. And if Jimmy Graham 
doesn't get a hand on it. It would have been another interception, but right there, that ball needed to be on a line to hit Jimmy Graham in stride, not up down the field where it let, allow the free safety to come in and make a play. Here comes the crowd on third and eight. Again, only a three-man rush, and again flushed out of the pocket is Harris. Throwing on the run, end zone. Hankerson incomplete. Well, now it's fourth down and eight. 5.23 to go in the third quarter. You have to take the field goal here and get three points, don't you? Yeah, I think you do, and that's what looks like they're going to do. But right there, Ja'Cory Harris had an opportunity to extend the play. A lot of his plays down the field have been off of broken plays, and you see that some of the throws that he's had in the pocket have not been as accurate as he would have liked. But outside of the pocket, where he's been really dangerous, but could not connect with Hankerson then. Osher from 39 yards away to cut the lead down to 13. And he's now made nine kicks in a row. We have arguably the two best field goal kickers in the ACC this season in today's game. Bosher and Casey Barth have both been perfect. It's a 13-point lead. Miami's offense staying on the field. Here's the situation. They're down two touchdowns, but a lot of time left. A minute 44 to go in the third quarter. It's a long field goal attempt of nearly 50 yards if you go for it. But they're going to stick with their offense on fourth down and just under 10 yards to go. Still in the third quarter at the 32-yard line of North Carolina. Four-man rush. They roll the pocket with Harris. Throws on the run. Finds a man. First down. Hankerson at the... 17-yard line as they convert on fourth and ten. And Hankerson does a good job of finding the hole. There he is right here. He's just going to find the hole right there. And Corey Harris buys some time. They're right back at the line over the middle inside the five-yard line. Another catch by Hankerson. First and goal. They went hurry up, and let's see. They may go hurry up again here. Yeah, they're on the ball again. They've got North Carolina on their heels. Quick snap. Hand off to Cooper. Touchdown. That drive felt like a hurricane. The fourth down and ten conversion to Hankerson. Another throw to Hankerson. Sets up the quick snap run by Greg Cooper. And now here is an interesting decision for the Canes as well. As they decide to go quick snap after quick snap. And it works to perfection. And Bosher tacks on the extra point. And it's a one possession game as they're down six with one minute and 18 seconds to go. Where have we seen this before watching this Miami team? <laughs> well, two weeks ago against Wake Forest, and the happiest guy on the Hurricane team is Leonard Hankerson. After dropping that long touchdown pass, comes back on fourth and 10, and right, he makes the conversion. And then the no huddle, he makes a grab over the middle, and then Greg Cooper punches it in for the Hurricanes, and a huge drive for the, for the Hurricanes back in this football game, only down six. And it's still the third quarter. And we saw Miami a couple of weeks ago at Wake Forest get absolutely dominated in the first half by the Demon Deacons. They came out with a tremendous second half, including a nine-play, 82-yard touchdown drive in the last two minutes. And they ended up winning that game in cardiac fashion. And the Canes down by six now. After going for it, the gamble on 4th and 10 pays off. They keep the drive alive. And they are a team that can drive a defensive coach like Butch Davis crazy because they've been such a quick strike offense this year. The thing that I, that's really evident about the Miami Hurricanes is their confidence. No matter what situation they get into as a team on Saturday afternoon, they believe that they can win. And everybody on that team believes in Ja'Cory Harris no matter what happens in the first half. You throw three picks, don't worry about it. Just come back and play the second half like nothing ever happened. You got to forget about it and move on. Greg Little takes a knee. He threw three interceptions in the first half, but now in charge of the comeback in the second half here at North Carolina. Ryan 
Houston. If you're John Shoup now, Brian, how does your play calling progress now that the momentum has shifted so much towards Miami? They have been so successful today. They've got 263 yards of offense. That's way above their average for the season. Continue to run your offense just like you have today. Continue to mix in the run with the pass, the screen game, misdirections, allow T.J. Yates to convert with Zach Pianalto on third downs. I think they feel very confident and comfortable with the way T.J. Yates has played. They'll put it in his hands. Houston on second down. Barely gets out to the 24-yard line. Maybe gained a yard. So now it's third down and six. And that might take us to the end of the third quarter. Little comes up limping. North Carolina does not have to snap the ball before the end of the quarter, and it looks like they're going to let the third quarter clock wind all the way down. Yeah, Houston rolled right on the back of Little's legs there. He was blocking for his teammate, and that's kind of the collateral damage around the pile when you're blocking as a wide receiver or as an offensive lineman coming up behind you. Opportunity to get rolled up on. He looks okay, though. What a terrific game through three quarters. Ten Stadium here in Chapel Hill. Their offense back on the field. North Carolina trying to protect a six-point lead against number 14, Miami. The Tar Heels have won four straight games against ranked opponents, including a win over Virginia Tech at Virginia Tech this year. Brian Houston. A gain of only a yard or two. DeMarcus Van Dyke made the stop. Now in the ACC Coastal Division, Georgia Tech already has won the division with a win today against Duke. They've clinched the division title. Miami at 4-2, and two, right there with Virginia Tech. They lost head-to-head -head against Virginia Tech earlier this season. But at number 14 in the BCS, Miami is still an outside chance at an at-large BCS bid. They need some teams in front of them to lose, certainly. And they have to win out. Houston. Across the 31-yard line. About five yards shy of a first down. And, Brian, for T.J. Yates, how hard is it to play quarterback when you feel the momentum turning the other way and the mentality is more protecting the lead than attacking? Well, it is right there. Miami defensively came up and, and had everybody in the line of scrimmage. And as a quarterback, you just in the back of your mind say, man, I wish we were throwing the ball right here because I have an opportunity outside to throw the football. But clearly North Carolina does not want to uh, take a risk right now throwing the ball. They want to run it. Miami knows it. Pump fake on third down. Down the sideline, a jump ball. Making the adjustment is Greg Little. And a flag comes out. Did Greg Little push off? Yeah, it looked like he did. Just a little push from, uh, from Greg Little. Big penalty here. Pass interference, number eight of the offense at 15 yards, previous spot, repeat third down. What a turnaround. It's certainly worth another look. Yeah, it looked like they had a double move on the outside and a good throw by, here's a little right here, a good throw by Yates to give him a chance, and that's a that's a ticky-tack foul there. That's not, that, that one, he saw that hand on his shoulder and, and anticipated that he had pushed off, but I don't think he actually pushed off. I think his hand was just on the guy's shoulder, and he turned around, and he was so wide open, the official thought he had pushed off. A questionable call, and it hurts Carolina. From first and 10 in plus territory to third down and 20 inside their own 20-yard line. Yates wants to set the screen up, but it's not there. Miami had it read perfectly. Houston was not open. The crowd booing maybe the decision by Yates to spike the football, but it was the right decision. Yeah, there was nothing there for Yates, and you gotta you gotta burn that one. The big the big play was the penalty, and I think this crowd is a little uh, has a little distaste for that drive there and for the call by the official. And they've seen some late collapses by this North Carolina team in the second half of some of their losses this year. Trying to avoid another one. The third straight three and out. And a returnable kick for Collier. To the 46-yard line. And a late flag is thrown. Well after the play had ended, a flag comes out.
It was another low, short kick by Grant Shalek, and the punter got an earful from Butch Davis when he came to the sideline. The crowd wanted a block in the back flag thrown in the first place right as Collier fielded the punt, and in the end, the penalty does go against the Canes. During the return, illegal block in the back, 21 by the offense, 10-yard penalty, it's still first down. That's Brandon McGee called for the penalty, so that puts Miami back in hurricane territory, but they have a chance to take the lead with this next drive. Desperate just for the ice machine to work, but that, and that last room was Tell actually Brian truth. Greasy's private study attached to his suite. <laughs> Tell the truth, you're right it's next to me. absolutely true, no, it's <laughs> amazing the accommodations you get hooked up with. Trap handoff. Barry breaks a tackle at the line of scrimmage and picks up a first down. Does that young man run hard or what? He's going to be a player. He's only a junior. He's got another year to come back, and... He just runs downhill. You talk with Mark Whipple, he says the thing he does great is he makes one cut and then it's downhill, and that's why he likes to use him almost exclusively up to this day in the season in the red zone. That's why he has seven touchdowns, but he's getting more and more carries in this offense. Harris up the scene incomplete. That time he led LaRon Bird too far. Corey Harris had time in the pocket. It's just a three-step drop and a slant flat on the weak side and did a good job of patient waiting. You're going to see the slant come behind. And Ja'Cory Harris does a good job of holding the football, waiting for him to clear the linebacker just a little bit out in front of, of Bird right there. Why so inaccurate? Footwork, mechanics, do you see something? Because his accuracy is probably his biggest Achilles heel. He's The intermediate throws, his accuracy has been off. He's got a long delivery. He needs to shorten up his delivery and he'll be more accurate. If you're longer, there's more opportunity to get in trouble with his delivery. Play action, middle screen. There goes Damian Berry again with a flag down. All the way to the 33-yard line of North Carolina if the play stands. The flag thrown back at the line of scrimmage, right at the snap. This might be the neutral zone. Offside, 42 of the defense. That penalty is declined. First down. And it was for Robert Quinn. And the screen game has been tremendous for the Hurricanes. If they haven't thrown it down the field, it's been the screen game. And North Carolina defensively just cannot help themselves. They want to rush the passer. That's what they do well. And it gets them in trouble on the screen game if the linebackers can't get off blocks to make the tackle. That's Greg Cooper back in the game as the lone setback with Barry on the sideline. Cooper up the middle. And he's got the true freshman Mike linebacker Kevin Reddick all over him. Reddick was number 23 in terms of linebackers in the country in our ESPN.com rankings last year in high school, but he enrolled in January, actually at mono, and missed all of spring practice. So he was, to a certain extent, a surprise addition as a starter, that inside linebacker for North Carolina. And Everett Withers was talking about Reddick as kind of a gym rat, loves the game, loves to learn, and Quan Sturdivant, the junior, has really taken Reddick under his wing and taught him how to play the middle linebacker position. Harris, that ball hit at the line, and a wobbly throw is intercepted again. Fourth interception of the day by Harris, the third by Kendrick Burney. He's already scored one touchdown on a return today, and he breaks another tackle. And then lost the football. No, he lateraled it. Back to Melvin Williams. There goes Melvin Williams on the handoff from Burney. Stripped from behind by Hankerson, but into the end zone for a touchdown. Butch Davis wants his field goal or extra point unit out on the field as fast as possible. They want to try and kick the extra point before the officials have a chance to review what might be three or four different elements of that play, but they've already buzzed down. Take it in. The ruling on the field is a touchdown. I think that was the longest play in college football this season. The previous play is under further review. 
Was this a forward handoff by it Bernie like if it, to if, Melvin Williams? If it was a fumble, let's see. I think he intends oh, to hand yeah. this ball up, and he does. He yeah. tossed it forward. Yeah, they'll be down right there at the 45. I think his intention was to hand the ball off to Melvin Williams, but he lost control of the ball, and it traveled forward. Yeah. What a wild play. And how about Melvin Williams starts to showboat and doesn't realize that Hankerson's coming from behind. And Hankerson may have knocked that ball out before they got across the goal line. Well, we got to go back to the uh, to the root of the of the problem. And another interception, the fourth of the game for Ja'Cory Harris. And how many times is this North Carolina defense going to come up with the big play and make a stop? And again, it was the pressure on Harris that forces... The tipped ball interception and the third interception for Bernie. And at some point, you have to wonder if you just try not to throw the ball deep. Just try to throw it underneath, and they're not able to protect Ja'Cory Harris in the pocket right now. It's led to three interceptions. Four interceptions by Ja'Cory Harris, three by Kendrick Bernie. And again, here's another look at what they are looking at. The interception obviously was fine, but Bernie trying to take the ball out of his hands and maybe get it over to Melvin Williams. But as he lost control of it, the ball traveled forward. Yeah, the only way, if, it, if they rule it a fumble, then then it's not a forward pass, obviously. Then it can continue to advance that ball to the end zone. It looked like it slipped out of his hands and then he knocked the ball. Now we're in a situation where it has to be inconclusive evidence to show that it was not a forward pass and it was a fumble and I don't know that they can reverse this with with that replay right there so I don't think they can advance a ball that's fumbled forward even if they rule that he fumbles the ball here I don't think You're you right. can fumble it forward to a teammate and then have that teammate continue to advance the ball so no matter what I think the ball is going to be dead at about the 46 yard line or so where Kendrick Bernie lost control of it And what also takes a long time in a review like this is not only to determine where the ball ought to be, but also what the clock should read. They have to go back, take a look at the clock, and make sure they reset the game clock to coincide with when the ball popped out and the play should have been dead. Well, here's our decision. After further review, there were two situations that were confirmed on the field. There was a fumble. There was a recovery. It was carried to the end zone. Before the fumble, the ball broke the plane of the goal line. The call on the field is confirmed. Wow. Touchdown. Second defensive touchdown of the day scored by North Carolina. And needless to say, Randy Shannon disagrees. And the extra point is good. 9.28 to go in regulation time, and North Carolina stretches to a two-touchdown lead again. Randy Shannon continuing to plead his case, and what he was telling the officials while we were away was that he still believes that it was Kendrick Bernie flipping the ball forward to Melvin Williams. Clearly his intent was to flip it forward and that he still thinks the play should have been killed at about the 45-yard line. But it was ruled a fumble and Williams was able to pick up the fumble and send it deep and now a short kick taken by Sharpton at about the 22-yard line. And he gets out across the 30 to 31 and let's take another look that what was a wild play and the pressure that created the interception. Yeah, and the key really was the pressure again, the play action. And there's pressure inside by Mullins, who gets a hand on Harris, and it looks like deja vu, the same type of play that Bernie made in the first half on the interception return. And then when he gets to right here, it looks like he wants to, to lateral it forward, but he instead it slips out of his hand, which by rule is a fumble. And it can be advanced even if it goes forward. So this is a legal play. And Melvin Williams is the beneficiary and just crosses the end zone before Hankerson gets there. He was lucky. He was showboating a bit. Trap hand off to Cooper. And Greg Cooper drags Bruce Carter close to a first down, a gain of nine. And, Brian, that's also one of those big differences between college football and pro football 
the fumble forward rule. It was my mistake That's confusing right, yeah. the yeah. rules with the two leagues as the Canes line up to go hurry up. They stretch one to Cooper, and he's got a first down and a lot more. All the way down to the 40-yard line of North Carolina. 20-yard gain. Now it's important as North Carolina defense has been on the field for quite some time. Miami is now in a two-minute offense. They've scored 15 touchdowns in the two-minute drill this season alone. Now they're going to huddle up, but this is a key uh, situation for the North Carolina defense. Probably tired at this point, but this game is not over by any stretch with eight minutes and 40 seconds left, and Miami only down by 13 points. Great catch made by Aldarius Johnson, and what a throw by Ja'Cory Harris. He drives you crazy sometimes with the lollipop nature of his throws. That time it was perfect. Well, yeah, we've seen some of the throws needed to have a little bit more zip, but this had just the right amount of touch to drop it in over Kendrick Burney right there and a good concentration by Darius Johnson to get a foot down and secure that catch. Right off the bat, Miami's now threatening, and this is the nature of this offense. Quick strike, a lot of guys that can make big plays, a lot of time left on the clock. The Canes right back in the red zone with a first down coming up on eight minutes to play. Back to the ground and Damian Barry. Down to the 14-yard line, a gain of three. We've seen Miami, with their no-huddle offense, really keep great rhythm at certain times on some drives. This time, a little bit more deliberate at a time in the game where down two scores, you think they might want a quicker pace. I think when they got down here so fast, they realized, let's slow it down and make sure we get the right call in the red zone. Harris fires one, end zone, caught, touchdown, Jimmy Graham. touchdown catch of the season for the former U.M. basketball star. There he is right here. Five touchdowns. He's going to be one-on-one -on -one coverage right down the middle of the field. The two safeties will split, and it's one-on-one -on -one coverage. And Ja'Cory Harris that time throws a dart perfectly to Jimmy Graham, and he goes up for the catch. North Carolina has the number one defense in the ACC. Only two other times this season have they allowed a team to score over 17 points in a game. And both of those games they lost. They lost to Georgia Tech. They lost to Florida State. Seven out of nine opponents they have held to 17 points or less. The third team to hang more than 17 on them now is Miami. But Miami still trails by a touchdown. And here's Greg Little on the kickoff return. Now to about the 25-yard line as we take a look at the Pacific Life game summary and what a day it's been for Kendrick Burney. Certainly has. He has three interceptions on the day, two of them resulting in touchdowns, but he's got to take his uh, defensive line and uh, linebackers up front out to dinner after this game because they have set him up for two of those interceptions. The last one coming right here, really a game changer in the fourth quarter. This defense now has 15 turnovers in the last five games alone, averaging three a game. They're really playing well. Brian Houston right into Darrell Sharpton. Can their offense now chew up enough time to get the game over with? That's a good point. There's uh, seven minutes left in the game, and for all the fireworks that you've seen from Miami offensively as well as defensively for North Carolina, the North Carolina offense can silence everything right now with a good drive put together that could uh, ice this football game. They need conversions on third downs. They're going to need to run the football and play action. Look for them to get some rollouts, some nakeds, to get the uh, Yates on the edge and convert. Let's see if they attack with their play calling. Second down and long. Play action. Yates rolls. Finds his man. Devin Ramsey up the sideline. That's a first down. Out to the 38-yard line. The fullback converts. 
Gain of 13. And a perfect play call by John Shoup. It's what we talked about. Get him outside the pocket with a run-pass option. Miami's expecting them to run the football. They're going to pack it in tight, and you get Yates on the edge and get the ball out to your fullback. A good gain on first down, and the key to this drive will be first down efficiency. You don't want to be in any third and long, so first and second down will be key. And sophomore fullback Devin Ramsey shaking up on that last play. Comes the blitz. Here comes the end around. Cutback lane to Jeremy Boyd. He's got a first down to the 49 yard line. Right behind the tight end, Zach Pianalto. And the key to this play was the block by the wide receiver. You're going to see him come around on the edge, but he gets a, of a good block. Allows him to get the first down there, but you're going to see creative ways now for North Carolina to run the football, whether it's inside with, with Houston pounding the rock or whether it's on the reverse with the wide receivers. And if you're Miami's defense, you probably have to think of your own 25-yard line as the goal line. That's probably how you have to play, right? First down for North Carolina at midfield. But I think North Carolina's done a good job. That last play was looked exactly the same as the end of round run, and we talked to John Shoup yesterday, and he said we have a lot of plays that look the same but are different. And it was key there, the same look, and then you got Houston up the middle for a good game. There goes Houston again. First down, North Carolina. Houston finds a crease, ran right behind the run blitz, and he's close to another first down. Colin McCarthy came on the outside on a will blitz. You see him on the top of your screen there, and Ryan Houston goes right by him and leaves a hole where McCarthy was supposed to be in his will linebacker position, but when he came on the blitz, there was nobody left. And Houston did a good job getting upfield. They're getting big chunks on first down, six yards, eight yards. Right there was nine and a half yards, and that was the key to the success on this drive. Second down and short, three and a half minutes to go. Houston has the first down to the 25-yard line. So from right here, as the clock stops on the first down, you're very well into field goal range. For those of you just joining us, welcome to Chapel Hill and Keenan Stadium. Number 14, Miami, on the ropes at North Carolina. The Tar Heels have two defensive touchdowns, and they put 30 points on the board. Miami, with some quick strike drives, continue to answer, but they can't trade scores now with three minutes to go. North Carolina at the 25-yard line, certainly in field goal range to potentially make this a two-possession game. Bob Schusen and Brian Greasy with you, and there's a handoff to Ryan Houston. And the North Carolina workhorse down inside the 20 to about the 19-yard line. And now, Brian, you start to wonder if Miami thinks about using their timeouts. They've got two left, and they might have just called one now. That's their second timeout of the half. That's the 30-second team timeout. So UM is hanging their hopes on getting a stop defensively right here. And again, right there, another positive play on first down, a six-yard gain. You're going to get a steady diet of Ryan Houston. That was his 27th carry, 23rd carry on the night. And at 245 pounds, you're going to continue to give him the football. The story for the Canes, though, has been turnovers for Ja'Cory Harris. He's got four interceptions, three by Kendrick Burney. Yeah, four interceptions, and I don't care what team you are. If you're negative four in the turnover margin on the road in a hostile environment against a good defense, it's going to be very difficult to win. Now, if you are John Shoup and you're play calling here for North Carolina, are you playing for the field goal? Do you simply want to take the clock down as far as possible, or are you are aggressive to try and pick up one more first down and maybe end the game on this drive? I don't really care about the field goal. All I want is to, is to get time off of the clock. So I want T.J. Yates to use every single second of that play clock, force Miami to use their timeouts. Let's convert a first down here, and we can run the clock out and not have to worry about anything. <laughs> Oh, 
Second down handoff to Houston. And he maybe picked up a half a yard. Miami will spend their last time out. And Randy Shannon ran out onto the field by about four yards to call it. Ja'Cory Harris timeout. just timeout hoping Miami. for one more chance. And so the worst thing that happens now for North Carolina is they don't convert on the third and four, and they have to kick the field goal. But what they really want is to convert, obviously, this third down and be able to run the clock out, and the game's over. Right here is a, is a perfect opportunity for this North Carolina offense to use a, a snap count, use a hard count. It's third and four. You know Miami's going to want to come up and make a play, and maybe you get a cheap one. You know, that's, that's part of managing the football game as a quarterback. Sometimes you can outsmart the other team from that position, and John Shoup may be relaying that to T.J. Yates right now, but I look for him to get Yates outside the pocket with another run-pass option, a safe throw, the last thing you want is a turnover here, a safe throw. If it's not there, get on the ground and kick the field goal. That's a great point as well. If you're the quarterback, the option here, even if it's not there, is to not throw it away on third down. No, like you said, ground. get on the ground and take as much time off the clock as possible. Now a first down for North Carolina. The game's over. With a 40-second play clock, you can That's right. get it inside of two minutes and take a knee. Here's the rollout on third down. Yates throws it to the sideline, very close to a first down, and knocked out of bounds. Bobby Rome made the catch, but he might be a yard shy. It's oh, at the 16-yard line. Yeah, it looks like they marked him a yard shy. But they ruled him inbounds, and so now the clock is still going to run. Well, how do you rule him inbounds? It looks like his knee may have been down. Wow. North Carolina may have got away with one right there. It looked like he fell out of bounds, which yeah. would have resulted in the clock stopping pretty clearly. It looked like his knee was down inside of the chalk there, and so the referee signaled to run the clock. So they're going to take the play clock all the way down and call a timeout. Let's take another look. You can watch his left knee. Right Great there. call. Right there. Good call by the official, and i got to be honest, uh, <laughs> they got away with one right there because I thought that, that Yates should have just slid down, but he got lucky with that knee coming down. So really it comes down to this for the hopes for Miami and maybe a win for North Carolina. Casey Barth has been perfect so far today. He came into today having made nine field goals in a row. The former walk-on, a sophomore, and the younger brother of Connor Barth, who's the all-time field goal leader here in North Carolina with a chance to make it a two-possession game with two minutes to go. If he misses, then Ja'Cory Harris would have one more chance, and Miami's offense this year has put together 17 drives where they've scored points in under two minutes, and 15 of those 17 drives have been touchdown drives. 33-yard field goal attempt. Wow, they got it down, and he puts it through. Trace Jones, the holder, did a great job to handle a tricky snap and get the placement down for Barth. And now the Canes are in big trouble. And everybody's congratulating the holder on the sideline for a great job at a high snap. Great job getting that ball down. Who says the holder's not important? So Butch Davis, who is as responsible as anyone in the history of Miami's football program for getting them back to respectability and turning that program against all odds when he took over in the, the mid-90s when Miami was down scholarships, they were faced with NCAA sanctions. His first year they were down 31 scholarships, but he coached them to a tremendous season. And by the year 2000, they were number two in America. And then they won the national championship the year he left to go to Cleveland to coach the Browns. And, and he, now he's here at North Carolina trying to build this North Carolina program into the same type thing. And he's building it. I mean, look at the last three games that North Carolina's played. They beat Virginia Tech. Then they beat a surging Duke team that had the number one offense in the ACC. Now they're up. Looks like they're going to beat the Miami Hurricanes. And most of, he's only got four seniors playing. So most of these guys are coming back for next year. 
I shudder to think what this defense is going to look like with all these guys as seniors next to A low kick at the 10-yard line on the back pedal. It's Mike James. Pretty good return out to the 35-yard line. Bob Oshuza to Brian Greasy here in Chapel Hill. Ja'Cory Harris has thrown four interceptions, and now he's got no timeouts and a minute and 51 to work with to bring his team from two scores down. Cooper trying to get to the sideline. And he ran a long way to pick up two yards and lose eight seconds of the process. Good decision, though. The time is more important than That's the right. yardage there. Yeah, he was just trying to stop the clock there. So a good job by him and effort getting out of bounds. And I know these Canes have been good in the two-minute drill, and they've been good at the end of games and pulled out some really bad situations with some wins, but they've really put themselves in a hole here with turnovers tonight. North Carolina still bringing a four-man rush. Harris over the middle. Hankerson's got it to the 31-yard line. That'll stop the clock on the first down with 1.36 to go. And again, when Ja'Cory Harris has time in the pocket and feels secure and throws with anticipation, he is accurate right there. A good throw over the linebacker and a two-deep coverage to Hankerson down the middle. Harris again looks for the big play into the end zone. Incomplete. Corey Harris sets up the screen. That's going nowhere. That's a terrible decision by Miami as Bruce Carter brings down Cooper. A big loss, and it keeps the clock rolling. A loss of six, and now Miami has to bring their receivers, who some of which were down near the end zone, all the way back to the line of scrimmage and get set as we come up on a minute to go. And it's third down, so they can't just get up and spike it. A great play by Bruce Carter, number 54, the linebacker for North Carolina, to sniff out that screen. Over the middle, Hankerson's got it! Down to the 16-yard line, and now you have to spike it. With 47 seconds to go, you need to stop the clock here. And let's see if that's what Harris does. It looks like he's going to get his team set and spike the ball. No, he'll throw it to the near side, Hankerson. Keep the clock rolling with 11 at the 11-yard line. Down to 35 seconds to go. Looked like his butt came down inbounds. Well, forward progress was certainly stopped forward, inbounds. Forward progress, yeah. Fumble snap to Corey Harris goes down. Tydreek Powell credited with the sack. Down to 15 seconds to go. Miami may not get more than one more snap off. Five seconds, and it's spiked, but that'll do it. You need two scores, and you only have time for one play. So North Carolina is going to knock off their fifth straight ranked opponent. And you play with fire. The Miami Hurricanes have made a living of coming back late in ball games, using their two-minute drill. But when you turn the ball over four times in a game on the road, you cannot expect to win in the end. And the Cardiac Canes have finally come up short. Great win for North Carolina and a terrific win for Butch Davis.